A couple named Catherine and Michael enter a completely white room and look around in amazement. Catherine points to a red button and tells her boyfriend that he should be the one to press it. With excitement, Michael presses the red button and is instantly greeted by a voice saying they were chosen to spend 50 days in the Immaculate Room and will take home $5 million if they complete the task. If one of them leaves, the prize money will drop to $1 million for the remaining person. Upon hearing this, the couple starts running around enthusiastically. As soon as they lay down on the floor, they wonder if they're dreaming. Michael says that they were just lucky and should be thankful. Catherine suggests that they should split the money if they win. She then asks Michael what he will do with his half. So he claims that he'll never think about money again, build real art, take a rocket ship deep into space, and do it all twice. Shortly after, Michael notices that the room is all white. As they enter the bathroom, the voice tells them that it's only for one contestant at a time. Catherine stays inside while Michael reads the rules on the screen. He then presses on the food treat, and it dispenses what looks like a milk box. Michael smells and tastes, commenting that it's nothing like Shake Shack. Catherine smiles at him and wonders if breakfast would be better. While Michael explores the room, Catherine browses the screen and sets the automatic lights out at 10 p.m. and the wake-up alarm at 7 a.m. She then asks her boyfriend if that's okay with him, and Michael says that she can set it whenever she wants because he's having a vacation and may never go out of bed. The lights turn off with the voice saying it's evening. As they're about to sleep, Michael tries to have fun with his girlfriend but she's afraid that Professor Voyan might be looking at them. So she proposes that they do it quietly and under the covers. The next day, while Catherine is looking in the mirror, she speaks words of affirmation to herself to help her get through the day. After taking a shower, she sees her boyfriend already up. Michael teasingly takes her towel off, leading the two into laughing together. Eventually, Catherine takes her breakfast, and Michael comments that their clothes make them look like people with mental health conditions. Worried, Catherine asks him why Professor Voyan would be doing all this. He then asks if she checks the link he sent her and explains that it's about a documentary, Fame, by Professor Voyan. He found a family in America and spent $150 million to see what would happen if he made them famous like celebrities. In the beginning, it went well, and the family got huge contracts, TV shows, and commercials, until the mother caught her husband with another woman and shot him. She went to jail for murder, the son disappeared, and their daughter overdosed on a harmful substance. Catherine asks him why the professor did all of that. He replies that no one knows, and what everyone knows is that Voyan has a lot of money. He adds that Voyan was interviewed 30 years ago, saying he was intrigued by the human condition. Feeling uneasy, Michael stares at the clock that's counting down their days in the Immaculate Room. Suddenly, the lights brighten up with the voice saying it's midday. Meanwhile, Catherine focuses on meditation as her way of coping with their situation. Later that day, Michael shares that he hates white because it's the absence of color. He also hates the clock because it went backward for a few seconds and went forward again. So Catherine tells him that he shouldn't stare at it. Still, he rambles on how they wouldn't know if they've been there for 50 days since all they have is the clock to tell them. Catherine comments that day two is a little early for conspiracy theories. Despite this, Michael starts to hate everything. He even notices that the light changes to simulate nature. As he's saying this, the lights turn off. Urging him to rest, Catherine reminds him to keep his eyes on the prize. Still, Michael remains wide awake and overthinking while his girlfriend quickly falls asleep. In the morning, Catherine continues her routine and tells herself words of encouragement to get by day after day. Once she steps out of the bathroom, she sees her boyfriend, who at this point is confused. She encourages him and advises him to take a shower. Anxious, the couple starts doing more things each day to kill boredom. They jog, play together, and dance. Catherine continues her meditation while Michael runs and stares at the clock. Soon, however, the couple slowly loses their minds. Days later, as the couple sits quietly, Michael notices a bug on the floor. He starts talking to the bug, rambling about how there's nothing to see in the room because there's literally nothing there. He then names it Chloe, but Catherine comments that by the looks of it, the bug will not last. Michael rushes to get their food to feed it, but the voice tells him that the food is only for contestant consumption. Disappointed, Michael tells the voice that he's just letting the bug out of the room and has no intention of leaving. However, Catherine advises him not to push the button to open the door because the system will see him as forfeiting. Still, Michael shouts that he wants to let the bug out because it's a living being. The voice reminds him that if one of them leaves, the prize money will drop to $1 million. Catherine insists that it's just a bug and her boyfriend comments that she lacks compassion for others. Knowing that he thinks this because she's not vegan, she points out that he only turned vegan to piss off his rich dad. 
She also adds that his dad gave him everything, so he never really suffered, thus stripping him of his artsy street cred. After saying all this, she walks away, but accidentally steps on the bug. She apologizes in shock, but Michael doesn't acknowledge her and leaves. Moments later, Michael tells his girlfriend that he's taking a treat, but Catherine reminds him that it'll cost him $100,000, which will be deducted from his half. Despite this, he takes his treat, which ends up being a green crayon. He stares at the wall, thinking about where to start until he begins making his art. Catherine hugs her boyfriend from behind and asks him to draw a portrait of her. She positions herself, and Michael starts to move his crayon. She tells him to do it realistically, but he says it's boring and his style is more interesting. Noticing that Michael doesn't want to draw her as a straight portrait, the girl leaves in annoyance, feeling that her boyfriend doesn't care. Michael continues to draw up to the last bit of crayon and washes his hands right after. It annoys Catherine as he leaves a stained towel on the floor and crayon residue on the sink. After cleaning, Catherine sits on the floor beside him and apologizes for the way she acted. Thinking that things are getting out of hand, she cheers him up by saying they only have 20 days left to finish the challenge. Upon walking into the bathroom, Catherine calls Michael in shock after finding a gun on the sink. She tells him to check it, but Michael is afraid that it might be loaded. She asks him to get rid of it in the laundry chute, but the voice reminds them that it's strictly for laundry use. Out of options, Michael kicks the gun under the bed. Afterward, the voice tells them that Connect is about to start. Michael calls his girlfriend and explains to her that Connect is a message from a family member. Michael receives a video message from her sister, which makes him happy. However, the smile on his face melts away when she asks him if he was in the Immaculate Room to forget Catherine, adding that leaving her was the right thing to do. She also tells Michael to take care and forget what happened to Sean. Right after Michael's video message, the screen shows Catherine's father, much to her surprise. She immediately shouts, wanting the video to end as she doesn't want to see it. Still, the video continues with her father asking to meet with her. He claims to be off the streets for a year, currently living at the St. Mary's shelter. Michael tries to comfort a panicking Catherine, but she pushes him away and sits in the corner. She then starts to cry as her father sings the song from her childhood. The following day, Michael sees Catherine refusing to get out of bed. She then shares that it was her father in the video. She admits to lying about her father because she was ashamed of him since he drank away their house and her school fees, making her life miserable. With nothing more to do, Michael loses his mind and even reads the shirt's wash tag repeatedly. He eventually joins Catherine on the bed just as the lights turn off for nighttime. Unable to sleep, he stares at the clock, thinking about what lies ahead. As the morning comes, Michael wakes up on the floor. He then tells Catherine to take the treat, adding that it's worth it. He tells her they got 18 more days and that taking a treat will help her get by. Michael worries that Catherine is also losing her mind, but she replies that she's fine and will do her usual routine. Later that day, Michael lies on the floor with spilled food beside him. Catherine approaches him and tells him to take his second treat. Michael obliges and goes to the screen to take another treat. To his surprise, a lady with no clothes walks in and introduces herself as Simone. Michael is confused about what's happening, and when his girlfriend shows up, Simone introduces herself. Simone is confused and asks him about the room, so Michael explains the immaculate room. Catherine doesn't believe Simone didn't know anything, but the lady reveals that she's an actress who got the gig from her manager, who booked her for a month. Catherine then tells Michael to give his shirt to Simone, which he immediately does. Simone wanders in the room, saying it reminds her of the studio she used to dance in. Catherine isn't pleased with what's happening, and Michael insists that he doesn't know what happened. Looking at the walls, Simone praises the art that Michael made, even identifying what style he used. Catherine then calls him and asks him what they're going to do as it's not cool to have a random person with them. While Catherine is talking about their next move, the lights turn off. Michael explains to Simone that the lights automatically turn off every evening. Having no spare bed, Michael offers Simone to sleep on the bed with Catherine while he sleeps on the floor. Too shy to take the offer, Simone says that she'll stay awake the whole evening. Disappointed, Catherine insists she can stay in bed with them as there's plenty of room, and Simone gladly accepts her offer. The following day, Catherine wakes up and finds Simone gone. Thinking she left, Catherine is relieved, only to find her in the bathroom. After a shower, Catherine decides to take her treat to relax. Catherine takes her treat and finds a small bottle of Cloud 9 pills. She takes one pill along with Simone, but Catherine warns her boyfriend that he should sit this one out. However, Simone insists that they all take it, so Michael also takes one. Moments later, everything turns as the pill starts to affect them. They have a good time until Michael suddenly collapses on the bed. Watching them dancing from afar, he then sees blood all over the place. As the blood flows around him, Michael suddenly falls into the water. While struggling underwater, he sees Sean jump into the pool. He tries to get to him, but Catherine and Simone shake him awake. Crying, Michael gets up to leave the room, but Catherine blocks him. 
convincing him to think about the prize money instead. He then lays down on the bed, apologizing to Sean as Catherine comforts him. Later that day, Simone asks Catherine who Sean is, so she shares that Sean was Michael's little brother who drowned while under his care. Michael was high at the time, so he couldn't save him. That evening, Michael washes his face, trying to compose himself. After that, Simone invites him to sit with her. Downheartedly, he tries to explain his story, but Simone reveals that Catherine already told her about Sean. Simone starts to talk about her mother, who died in a car crash when she was 12. Michael cries, realizing that when somebody dies, love is the only bomb to the pain. While the two are talking, a jealous Catherine interrupts, asking what's happening with them. Michael assures her that they're only talking. Enraged, Catherine scolds Simone for seducing her boyfriend, calling her a call girl. Simone fires back, calling her insecure until Michael shouts and leaves. When he's gone, Catherine realizes that it was probably nothing, but Simone hints that maybe it wasn't before walking away. The next day, Catherine knocks on the bathroom door, asking Simone if she's about to finish, but no one answers. She decides to open the door and discovers that Simone is gone. In regret, she tells Michael that Simone has left. Noticing writing on the wall, Catherine calls Michael. She points out the writing which suggests that he slept with Simone while she was asleep. Disoriented, Michael insists that nothing happened between them. However, Catherine points out that Simone looked like Michael's ex-girlfriend. Pissed, Catherine pushes him, causing him to hit his head on the wall. As he bleeds, she rushes to him, saying it was an accident. He moves away and asks her if he has ever been unfaithful to her. He also reminds her that he stopped seeing his so-called rich friends because she was uncomfortable and didn't attend art school because she was depressed. He does all of this to make her happy and secure, but what he receives in return is jealousy. Michael collapses on the floor, deciding that they need to get out of the room. Catherine asks him to wait and immediately grabs their sustenance and a towel. She puts the towel on his head and makes him drink for sustenance, but Michael insists that he needs a doctor. Unfortunately, they didn't have an allowance for medical intervention as in the contract. As Michael weakly leans on the wall, he realizes that she doesn't care whatever happens to him and will let him bleed for the money, but Catherine denies it. Michael asks her to leave with him, but she still refuses. So he gets up and walks to the red button. Michael says that the room is a mirror that sets them up to test them morally and spiritually, but clearly they're failing. Whatever he says, Catherine insists on them staying, but he keeps telling her that staying in the room is wrong. Catherine is firm about her decision to stay, but Michael decides that he will leave with or without her. As he nears the red button, Catherine yells at him to stop walking. When Michael turns, he sees her shakingly holding a gun against him, insisting that he can't leave. She claims he's not being rational to throw away millions of dollars. Despite this, Michael calmly says that the room is messing with her mind. He then turns around even though Catherine gives him a warning shot. He continuously walks to the red button, pushes it, and finally walks outside to his freedom. A voice then thanks him for staying and states that the prize money drops to $1 million. Upon hearing this, Catherine is devastated and lies on the floor. Days go by, and Catherine still manages to stay in the room, but she keeps crying, shouting, and staring at the wall. Two days before the end of the contest, she slowly approaches the red button and reaches for it. Days later, Michael is running on the street. To his surprise, he sees Catherine coming out of the St. Mary's building. After greeting each other awkwardly, the two apologize to each other for what happened between them. Catherine then shares that she was visiting her father. As Michael walks to her car, he curiously asks her if she made it, but she avoids his question and asks about his life. From the side of the building, a plaque commemorates how the new St. Mary's kitchen manages to continue its operation because of an anonymous donor. One day, a new couple arrives at the Immaculate Room. Sandy Williams and Jason Wright can't contain their excitement, hoping to win the prize. As she looks around the place, Sandy is hopeful that the Immaculate Room will change everything. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.